Hey, this is Pastor Nick Gillespie from the Grace Baptist Church. Thank you for tuning in to our channel and watching this sermon. I hope this sermon that comes up is a blessing and an encouragement to you. If you ever see fit to come join us, we're at 344 8th Street at the corner of Vacancy, downtown Springfield. We'd love to see you. I have another message for you right at the end. Stick around. So with this one, you can go ahead and flip if you want. We're not going to be... Um, I... I <laughs> We're not going to be um, doing verse by verse by, on this one. And uh, so if it's okay with you, I have all the notes here. You can flip if you want. However, most of it's going to be on there, and I have eight pages to go through. We need to be done by 735 tonight. And uh, so if it's okay with you, I'm just going to put my Bible down here. I'm going to read the same exact verses. And if you want to try to flip and follow along, you can, or you can just listen. I will have every verse up here in an effort to try to say this time. So uh, with that, we're going to talk about two different things today. Uh, but we're in the, I can't teach the Gospels without teaching this, Miranda. And uh, as much as uh, she's going to roll her eyes during the lesson, you know, because we taught this, I didn't teach it the last two Christmases. But she's probably seen it, you know, three or four times before that. And uh, so hopefully I can find something on this that's a little bit more interesting and uh, we'll see how it goes all right uh let's go ahead and pray father again we are thankful for our wednesday night time pray to bless us as we open our bibles help us to learn from it and uh, pray to help us have a clear mind to use them and pray amen i'm not going to say what i'm teaching tonight is 100 percent, but however i'm pretty sure this is the case there's a couple of small assumptions here uh, but it's the best explanation I have for the time and place of Jesus' birth. You know, people use something like, you know, well, shepherds abiding in the field. And, you know, sheep have their lambs in the spring. Therefore, that's why the shepherds were in the field. There's nothing in the Bible that tells us this. And uh, so, you know, we're basing all of that on that. It's just, what if it was because of all the taxation that Caesar Augustus put on people and therefore there's an influx of people. Now there's too many people and some people decided to rent out their houses. So the shepherds went out and buy, uh, be, uh, buy, uh, abided. What's the past tense? Abode. I like it. Abode in the field, you know, because, you know, they're renting out their houses to people. Or could it be that they had nagging wives and, you know, how, what the Bible says about that, better to dwell, dwell on the rooftop. Then in the house with the you know nagging woman, I think. What's that say again, Gav? Not gonna, you know, that's where you're gonna run out of good guts right there. Huh? And so it could be that the shepherds were out and abiding in the field because all the women folk got together and they said we're not gonna take it anymore. And they started nagging the shepherds, and the shepherds said, No, we're gonna go sleep in the field. That's more Bible than basing our you know time of when Jesus is born on the shepherds abiding in the field. Uh, we don't know why they're sleeping on the field. Maybe there is another reason. But uh, if you want to go, okay, again, you don't have to go. I'll just be reading these. The sheet I have in front of you will end up looking like this. So if you're one of those that would be kind of stressed out while I'm reading this, trying to figure out where to fill these things out, uh, right there, course of Abaya, conception of John, announcement, conception of Jesus, and of course, Miranda still has this on the front of her notebook from, you know, from a couple months ago. Feast of Fools, uh, Birth of Jesus. So if you want to write that first, because uh, we're going to come back to it, but um, in case you're wondering where these are going to fit and you might get stressed out about it, that's the last thing we want. All right. So 1 Chronicles chapter 24 and verse 4 says this. Now, 1 Chronicles 24 is David setting up the courses for the priests in the tabernacle. And, uh, you know, and then it's going to transfer into the temple. But in, anyway, so set up the courses. David did that. And so when we come to this, 24 verse 4, and there were more chief men found in the sons of Eliezer than in the sons of Ithamar. And doesn't that sound like it should be Middle Earth? Ithamar. And thus, where they were divided among the sons of Eliezer, there were 16 chief men of the house of their fathers, and eight among the sons of Ithamar, according to the house of their fathers. So eight plus 16, how many men are in the courses? The answer to the first one is 24. And so then how many months in a year? Does anybody want to raise their hand and answer that one? No, no. All right, so 12, 12 months in a year. 
And then how long is each course then by this assumption? Because we know that they aren't working the entire time because they stop when their course is over. So if there's 24 men and then there's 12 months a year, then each course would be two weeks. That is the assumption in this. Well, there's one other assumption, but you know, you're, you're trying to connect dots here. So, all right. So then 1 Chronicles chapter 24, verse 10 says this, the seventh to Hakos and the eighth to Abayah. So Abayah is of what course? Abayah would be then of the eighth course, which be the second half of the fourth month. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. So the fourth month. If we were doing Gentile, if we're doing our calendar, that would be the second half of April. But that's not how the Jews do their calendar, as you see right here, the course of Abayah. Well, we started it with Nisan, uh, would be Tammuz, which would be in our time, sometime around June and July. Does this all make sense so far? Simple. All right. So then we go down, now we go to Luke chapter Harper. This not a lesson you've never heard before. <laughs> What's funny is I actually had this done and ready to go last week. I'm always nervous when we have a missionary coming in, you know, that I don't know any, don't know at all. And you know, what if he, you know, what if something breaks down all the way? What if, you know, something else happens? So I actually had this all ready last week. I, I shorted it up a little bit today, but I uh, had it ready last week. All right, Luke chapter one, verse five. There was the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias in the course of Abiah. That Abiah right there is Abiah from the Old Testament. Spelled different because we here are translating from the Greek, there we're translating from the Hebrew. And so that then, that Abiah is there. So there's a certain priest named Zacharias in the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Now notice the spelling of Elizabeth there with an S. That's the proper spelling of Elizabeth, just so you know. And uh, so we have a priest named Zacharias in your notes there. And of the course of Abiah, you can spell it A-B-I-A, or you can spell it A-B-I-J-A-H, whichever one you want to do. So then we come to Zacharias, who was then a priest after the course of Abiah. So he goes in to do his work. Verse 23, we find this. It came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration, she can't catch what I said. See, that was made an interesting for you, didn't it? You know, mispronouncing words and then getting it all messed up. Uh, as, soon, as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, so how long after his ministration? Soon and after. Doesn't mean it had to be the next day, but you know, imagine it has to be a couple days for the whole process to, you know, for conception to happen, but soon and after. Now we go to verse 26 of the same chapter. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent forth from God uh, unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. So the sixth month, now and behold, verse 36, thy cousin Elizabeth, uh, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month of, her, of uh, with her who was also, uh, who was called barren. I almost said also, because then if I'm throwing in too many also's, then I make it sound like Mary was of old age as well. She was not. Um, and one month of Elizabeth's, Elizabeth's pregnancy was Gabriel sent to Mary. So that'd be the sixth on your sheet. In the sixth month, Gabriel was sent to Elizabeth. Which, by the way, John the Baptist leapt in the womb. Of course, now it would be legal in some places to just go ahead and kill him. So what we have here... Looking back at our sheet, now that we filled those out, we find what the course of Abayah is based on those months. The assumption is that each course is two weeks. That's the assumption. So you have course of Abayah, then you have the conception of John shortly thereafter, Zacharias and Elizabeth, conception of John the Baptist, and then six months later you have the announcement. At that point, you have the conception of Jesus by the Holy Spirit with Mary. And you'll notice that the Feast of Fools happens right around the 1st of April. So those of you pulling your April Fools jokes, you know what you're celebrating? 
you're celebrating people who mock you for believing in the conception of Jesus Christ. I'm kidding, by the way. Just completely kidding. You know, April Fool's jokes are fine, but I do pull that out on April Fool's Day. If somebody tries to pull something on me, I Feast of Fools nine months before the birth of Christ, well, nine and a little bit more. Where it says birth of Jesus, is that supposed to say John? On the bottom right? Mm -hmm. No, it's birth of Jesus. I mean, conception of Jesus was after. Okay. The event on the, the column on the left side then continues on the right. This is over, it's two years shown on there. Okay. Does that make sense? I guess so, yeah. The first column is one year, and then that, the, the Feast of Fools is right after the conception of Jesus. Okay. It all corresponds to here. Mm -hmm. Got me? Got me. And then birth of Jesus would be over here, which would be the end of December to the beginning of January. Or you can just go by shepherds abiding in the field, which has no basis in scripture, if that's when Jesus is born. Which, by the way, I'm not going to argue with anybody on this, but I like to have fun with it, just so you know. Uh, oh, you know, the, you know, there's no biblical evidence of that, especially people trying to, you know, cause a doubt for Christians and talking about how, uh, you know, oh, we don't even know when he was born. You know, well, actually, we kind of do. Um, so there you go. Any questions on the first part of the lesson, which was only 12 minutes? The second half is also on here and not in the notes, and this is where most of our time is going to be taken up. Um, for some reason, this, most people don't care, actually, about this next topic, uh, but it's interesting to me that the kind of disagreement you have on it and how, it's kind of like the crucifixion of Christ. We know it wasn't on Friday. We know this. The math doesn't add up forward. It doesn't have to happen. You know, three days and three nights. You cannot cram three days and three nights from Friday evening to, to Sunday morning. You can't do it. Um, now, I think even then there's a little fudging, but I think it was Thursday. And uh, that, you know, works forward and backwards when you do your Bible study on that. If somebody were to argue for a Wednesday, I'd kind of be okay with that. But then you have to cram some other things. And a Thursday crucifixion makes Wednesday a very uneventful day in the Passion Week. I'm okay with that. Because then it's more time with just Jesus spending time with his disciples, you know, talking about things we don't know about, which is fine. But people hold on to that. You, you try to show them differently, and it doesn't matter. We're going to celebrate Good Friday, right? But this other one, you know, people don't like this one. I don't, I don't get it. Uh, so, again, we're even talking about when Jesus was born. Now we're talking about when did the wise men show up. And do you realize with these two lessons, how many weeks of lessons we're just kind of skipping because we're just covering the whole thing? In this, we're not talking about Simeon. We're not talking about Anna. Because remember on uh, when they went to the temple on day eight, or was day 40? Day eight, day 40, one of the two. They were in Jerusalem. That would be covered by this. So those are some things that we are just kind of uh, going with. So let's cover this real quick. Daniel chapter five. And so remember, Daniel was written mostly from Babylon and partially from Shushan, the palace. Babylon would have been Nebuchadnezzar. Shushan, the palace, would have been Artaxerxes. Xerxes, and it also would have been where Esther, uh, the whole story of Esther and uh, Naaman happened, would be from Shushan. And so remember, the Shushan was the beginning of the Medes and Persians, and then Babylon was the end of the... When Daniel was there, was the end of the Babylonian Empire, which remember Daniel ended up working his way to number two to both kingdoms. So there is a man in thy kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods, and in the days of, of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of gods, was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father, made master of the magicians. So that magicians there, that's what we need to cover. So the magicians here that Daniel ends up teaching ends up being the magi, the wise men that show up to give Jesus gifts, okay? So when you talk about magi, we're talking about wise men, we're talking about these guys. Astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. For as much as an, as an excellent spirit, knowledge, and understanding, interpreting of dreams, and showing of hard sentences, and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar, now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. So I have here a depiction of the, of the Fertile Crescent. Now with this, 
uh, just pointing out, you, you know over here, that's Jerusalem. And so Mediterranean Sea, this would be Egypt, this would be Sinai Peninsula, Arabian Peninsula here, and then over here would be the Persian Gulf, and then Iraq, Iran, and then the Fertile Crescent goes up to uh, Euphrates and Tigris rivers, up into southern Turkey, and then back over. See, when you go from Babylon to Jerusalem, you do not go straight across. Otherwise, we cross the desert. And nobody wants to do that at that point. It's a mountainous desert in some places. So what you're doing is when you're traveling from one place to the other, you are going up over the Fertile Crescent and back down. So we have the Magi, we have Babylon, we have Shushan, which would be Susa. that's over there. That would be the Persian Empire. And then we have Babylon, Babylonian Empire. And remember the Medes and Persians took over from the ba uh, Babylonians. As a matter of fact, there's a shrine for Daniel in Shushan, which I should have put a picture of, I'm sorry. But Alexander the Great, when, uh, when fighting for the, when leading the Greeks, um, made it to Babylon and ruled from there. And so then Alexander the Great came down, came across, came back up, and ended up over there and died in Babylon. Magi means sorcerer, magician, or wise man. We get the word magician from it. Um, it's now used in somewhat more of a negative sense, but not so back then. The people were philosophers, priests, or astronomers. They lived chief, chiefly in Persia and in Arabia. They were uh, learned men of the Eastern nations, devoted to astronomy, to religion, and to medicine. <clears throat> they were held in high esteem by the Persian court, were admitted as counselors, and followed the camps in war to give advice. There's no indication in scripture that the wise men, that there's just three of them, because that's generally the depiction. By the way, if you send me a card, <clears throat> and it shows you know three men on camels showing up to a manger, and Jesus is in the manger. I'm going to go along with it. Keep sending them. I'm not going to, but you know, in the back of my mind every time, or it's that one where it looks like it's two dinosaurs fighting over a table saw. You've seen that one depiction. I can show that. If that throws you off completely, ask me. I will send you the meme. Uh, but you know that's not how it happened. You know, three men carrying gold, frankincense, and myrrh are not going to be traveling by themselves. You know why? They get mugged. You know, just like you trying to, you know, you're going to ride a, you know, ride a camel from here down to San Francisco. And you're going to do it at night, and you're going to be carrying gold, frankincense, and myrrh. There's going to be more than three of you. You know, because you're going to set up camps, you're going to do all sorts of stuff. You be able to protect each other. And uh, if you have gold, frankincense, and myrrh, you're probably also probably rich yourself. So you're not going to just go with three. But anyways. <clears throat> All right, so the Bible says that they're from the east. These wise men were Jews who studied under Daniel's teaching from 400 years earlier, which we just read. Uh, many people stayed behind when Zerubbabel and Nehemiah, remember we covered them two, three weeks ago, Zerubbabel, uh, led some of the remnant back to Judah. And so they would know because Daniel's 70th weeks from Daniel chapter 9. I'm going to cram a micro lesson into this one. But Daniel chapter 9 talks about the 70 weeks. 70 weeks. And again, remember these will all be on, uh, you know, on video as well. Let's go ahead and read there, verse 24. 70 weeks. Now, to answer yourself, 70 weeks of what? You go back to verse 2, and it makes it clear this is talking about years. Weeks of years. If we're talking about weeks of days, it'd be seven. We're talking about weeks of years. So 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. Who's thy people when we're talking about Daniel? Gavin, you want to answer that one? Anybody? Talking about Jews. Talking about Israel. 100%. Talking about Jews. Not talking about the church. Church, had, church won't even exist for another 600 years. So 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. Where's the holy city? It's Jerusalem. You realize that most of Revelation centers around Jerusalem in that area, right? Okay, just making sure. To finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. These 70 weeks are all of those things there. Most of those things are going to happen during the tribulation, because that's interesting, because that's only one of the weeks. Know therefore and understand that the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, shall be. Now it's interesting here. Some say this commandment that's talking about here goes to March 14, 445 B.C. And that would have been from an Encyclopedia Britannica. 
However, I don't care. I, I'm never going to go back and try to double check, whatever. But if that be the case, March 14th, 445 BC, this will be interesting. Now watch this. Shall be seven weeks, which is 49 years, and three score and two weeks, which is 434 years. And the street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublesome times. Okay? So it seems like that's, you know, what's that talking about? It really isn't that difficult, but I'll show you uh, in just a moment. Um, so it's clear it's talking about the Jews, right? It's talking about Jews. And by the way, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that in a derogatory sense. It's speaking about Israel. It's talking about Jews. We are not Jews. We are not Israel. We are Gentiles. We are the church. Okay? So let's keep on going here. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. So that would be a total of 434 years. But not for himself, and the people of the prince shall, uh, that shall come uh, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Okay, so, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Okay, so we had 69 weeks, and now we have a 70th. That 70th week, that one week, that group of seven years, that's one of the places where we get that the tribulation will be seven years. Now, again, tribulation is only going to be the second half of that seven years. So sometimes we get flack for calling it the tribulation. Jacob's trouble is what we should be calling it. Second half is great tribulation. There's going to be peace during the first half of the tribulation. It doesn't matter. We won't be here. And so in the midst of the week shall he cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. So that's talking about the Antichrist. Will cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. That is talking about, that one week is talking about the tribulation. So, another, just a little small point here. The 70 weeks are about the Jews. The 70th week is about the Jews. The 70th week is set apart, hasn't happened yet, and it pertains to the Jews. So now, if this was written in the Old Testament and they didn't know about the church, there'd be no reason for anybody in the Old Testament to ever talk about the rapture. But now, because we know in the 70th week, God is hinting to us here in the Old Testament, we know now that there is a break between the 69th week and the 70th. God gave little clues in the Old Testament, and here's one of them. Okay. So in the first verse we find, verse 25, it's seven weeks times seven, so that's 49 years. The second, verses 20, in verse 25, is 62, three score and two, which now is seven uh, times seven is 434 years. These two add up to 483 and leaves just one week missing. So then the third is in Daniel 12, four, and in Revelation, that's the tribulation upon thy people, is the 70th week and the last one. So verse 25 tells us that from the commandment to the cutoff of the Messiah is 483 years. That would put it, if you want to keep track, on April 6, 32 AD. Are you going to write that down? It's April's crucifixion? No. You know why? Because when we get to that point, we're getting all jumbled. We're getting into dates. We're changing. I mean, in the Gregorian calendar, Julian calendar, I'm sorry, you know, it always threw me off because people say the millennium starts in, you know, 2001. Like, no, it always starts at zero. But then you go back and look, there was no zero. Because I said, hey, there's no such thing as 1 BC, 0, 1 AD. Or, I mean, that's how it has to go, right? That makes sense to me. But that's not how they did it. They actually went 1 BC, 1 AD, essentially skipping a year. What would that be? Is that skipping a year? So if you go from one, things have to happen, zero. Zero to one. Things have to happen, right? Yeah, so we skipped a year. Whatever. See, that's why I don't really, when I tell you April, I'm saying that as a joke uh, because somebody told me that and I just leave it in. So, but the Messiah would be cut off then on April 6, 32 AD. And we know that the is about five years off. And so that means the Messiah must be born. So that's how the wise men would do the math. The wise men would have learned from Daniel, where we just looked, where they saw 483 weeks, knowing that the Messiah must die in 483 years from a certain date. They had it, 
And so they know then he must be born. So then, but okay, so they know they have so now they need to back off a little bit. And I'm down to 10 minutes, so we gotta go quick. So he must be born. So let's go back to the fertile crescent here. I'm gonna show you the size. So this is the fertile crescent overlaid over the United States. So the wise men are those three figures on the right. I thought you said there were three. Yeah. Okay, so basically the trek from where they were in, in um, Shushan, if that's where they were, but it have been right around there, is basically they were walking from Indianapolis to Denver, Colorado via South Dakota. Does Indianapolis, Highway 90 goes up to South Dakota, right? Does it go up that far? Yeah, you take, um, you probably break out from the 180 and you end up right over there. Yeah, but if you want to go way out of your way, you go to 90, right? You go higher. Yeah. Out of your way. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying out of your way. So, you know, is that hard? That might be hard to see, but the whole point of this right here is to show you the wise men, you know, Indianapolis to Colorado via South Dakota because they had to go up and over. Up and over. Let's overlay California. Maybe that'll make it a little bit easier. So you see, it'd be like hiking from Southern California. You know, if you flipped it then back over, uh, then back to practically Oregon. So at this point, right now in our story, Mary and Joseph are in Nazareth, right? And so Luke chapter one, verses 26 and 27 says this. And the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, uh, the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. So that's where we are right now. Mary and Joseph are in Nazareth. Uh, Nazareth uh, is now a city of about 60,000. Uh, but at the time of the village, only a few, few hundred probably live there. It's probably primarily an Arab city now. Uh, normally the family would go to Jerusalem three times a year from here, Passover, Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Remember, they forgot him on one of these, Jesus, and left him behind. And even then, it talks about how there was a company. There was kinsfolk. It wasn't just Mary, Joseph, and Jesus going down to Jerusalem. They went in packs because they were dangerous people along the way, just like there would be now. You know, it, it, you know think about that if you would. So that puts Mary, and Joseph, and Nazareth. Now, let's get them to Bethlehem, Luke chapter 2. So you see the move south, and you can see the difference. It's not very far on the map. And go back over there, you see that. Nazareth didn't go very far. And uh, so, Luke chapter 2, 1 through 7. And it came to pass in those days that there went a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Uh, here you can skip down to 4, and you can save some time. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. And to be ta uh, taxed, and then verse 7. Uh, we'll go ahead and skip ahead there. Again, trying to make up some time. She brought her forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger. And so there we find Jesus being born in Bethlehem, and we find Mary and Joseph there at the same time. So the question for you is, do you think that the star appeared at this time, or did the star appear months ago? Did the star appear when Jesus was born, or did the star appear before Jesus was born? I should, I, that was a rhetorical question. Very rhetorical. Okay. I have to disagree with y'all saying that the angel appeared when Jesus was born. But let's see there. Um, I'm going to show you kind of why here. So at this point, I'm sorry, again, that was rhetorical. I'll be a little bit more clear next time if it's rhetorical. So there are other clues, but right now, watch this where we are. So, and by the way, I didn't make a, a, a baby for this graphic, so just leave me alone on that. All right, so the wise men are still in Persia. So in the next year and a half, the Magi, the wise men, would be leaving Persia to walk the Fertile Crescent to Jerusalem. This takes months. Now, if you think that, that the star appeared well before, then yes, you can have Jesus there on time. However, the rest of Scripture, to me, doesn't show that. So... But they knew that the Savior had to be born, that this person that was cut off had to be born. And so then we come here. Now, Numbers chapter 24, verses 15 through 19. This would be a prophecy that the Magi would know about. Daniel would know about this. 
So verse 17, there shall come a star out of Jacob. Notice the capital S right there, and out of Jacob. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. And Israel shall do valiantly. You see it there? And out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. We're not talking about when Jesus is born. This is pretty much a little bit why people are confused. Jesus is born. This is talking about the star that was born. But then the other part, talking about Israel doing valiantly, is talking more about Trib area. So, now we backtrack a little bit. The star shows up, and so they head to Jerusalem. Um, and if you think it showed up once before, we're fine with that. Still, we have some other problems here. So now Jesus is born. I did make one. Yes, I did. Okay. No, the, th the last graphic is one that I, had, I saved time on, not this one. All right, so Jesus is born. Uh, shepherds are biting the field. There's no room in the end. The wives, whatever, kicked them out, whatever that's going to be. There's no mention of the wise men. And uh, circumcised on the eighth day. Luke chapter 2, verse 22. And when the days of your purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And so now, what's the next one there? Okay. So here you have them still there. Now they're on day eight, they go to Jerusalem. Now, why would they go back to Bethlehem after day eight? They don't live there. They went there to be taxed. So they go back to their hometown. They go back to Nazareth, right? So that's where they're from. So day eight, they go to Jerusalem, which isn't very far from Bethlehem. I mean, it's not a stone's throw, but it's not very far. And then they go to Nazareth. There's no reason for them to go back to Bethlehem. So, unless the wise men showed up in the first week, they did not go to Bethlehem, which they didn't, by the way, anyways. So, day 40, we know that they're back in Jerusalem. Day 40, we'll be back in Jerusalem. The wise men are still in Persia, but on their way. So that's where we are here. So then the wise men make it to Jerusalem. However, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus aren't there. Right? We find that in Matthew chapter 2. All right. Man, i got to go quick here. Now, Jesus born in Bethlehem, Judea. Okay, if I don't keep up on the screen, just stick with me. I'm going to read it. I'll try to get it. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, which they came to Jerusalem to meet Herod. He did not rule from Bethlehem. Even though Micah 5, 2 tells us that Christ would be born in Bethlehem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east, and are come to worship him. The star did not lead them in the entire journey, according to verse 2. Uh, they were aware of Numbers chapter 24, so then they were aware of Micah 5, 2. So they said, where is he, not where was he born? They knew where he was going to be born, but they didn't know where he presently was. The wise men would have no present reason to believe that Herod would not be happy that the king of Jews was born. Herod was a tyrant. We already covered that a few weeks ago. Uh, he killed... Many people in his own family. Uh, skipping some other stuff here. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Again, Herod rules from Jerusalem. And uh, we read what Numbers read it, said about the ruler. So, verse 3. And then Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Sorry, I read that again twice. And when he gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Notice the quick answer from them, because Herod should have known this, but he didn't. And he said unto them, they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus is written by the prophet, and he quotes Micah 5 2. So it's open knowledge. Verse 7. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired them diligently what time the star appeared. Okay, so what time this so Herod calls the wise men over and said, Hey, where did this thing when did this happen? And that's gonna matter here in a minute. And then Herod, when he had privately called uh, quit reading the same verse twice. And he said to them in Jerusalem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. Notice he didn't say babe, he said young child. It's important there. And when you have found him, uh, bring your word again, that may come worship him also. So he's a liar. We know this. So Jesus, Mary, and Joseph are in Nazareth right now. So now the wise men would have met them there. And verse 9, when they heard the king, lo, uh, they departed, lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them until it came and stood over where the child was. This star was not a star, celestial star. It was not a line of the planets. It was an angel. It stood over where the young child was. We're fine with that. And when he saw the star, they rejoiced exceeding joy. Notice again, verse, um, the end of verse 9, young child, young child. 
And now verse 11, it's right here, plain as day. And when they were come into the house, was Jesus born in a house? Was the manger in a house? When they were in Jerusalem, they were in a house. So they were in a house, in the house. They saw the young child. So a young child in a house. They're not in Bethlehem. And Mary's mother, they fell down worshiping him when they had opened up the treasure. They presented him gifts, gold, frankincense, myrrh. Uh, verse 12, being warned, God dreamed that they should not return and inherit. They departed into their own country another way. And so instead of going I-5, they went to Highway 99. Um, all right. So Joseph, then at this point, then they're warned. Joseph and Mary and Jesus go then down to Egypt. Notice Jesus is a small child here. Verse 13, so Joseph and Mary and Jesus are in Egypt, which fulfills scripture from Hosea chapter 11, verse 1 And here. We'll skip that. So, Bethlehem, then in the surrounding area. Now watch this in verse 16. Then Herod, when he had, uh, saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and all the coast thereof from two years old and under. Why? According to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. At this point, the star was two years ago. <clears throat> and if the star was two years ago, then does that mean that the wise men showed up and they left and Herod just forgot about it for two years? No, it doesn't add up. So, now again, it could have been before, but still, we still have a time gap here. So this is where then Herod kills all the children in, around Bethlehem in that area and uh, who were two year old and younger because he was threatened by Jesus. And so two years, Jesus, you know, so the wise men didn't show up for two years after. And so then from that, we get from when Herod died then the son died. Uh, from here you have then uh, the young child going back. Archelaus then reigned. We learned a little about him about three, four weeks ago. And so I put the wise men on the wrong spot here. But now Joseph and Mary are back in Nazareth to grow up there. The wise men are on their way. And that time frame doesn't work, by the way, because I would imagine they were in Egypt a little bit longer than that. And the wise men would have been you know, back home a long time ago. And I think this is that's the graphic. I really couldn't uh, save me a heap of time just leaving like that. And so he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, uh, that it might be filled with spoke by the prophet, she shall be called a Nazarene. All right. Any questions? Hey, this is Pastor Nick Gillespie from the Grace Baptist Church. Thank you for tuning in to our Bible study series on the Gospels. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's an encouragement. I'll see you at the end of the video.